In today's video, we will look at where to stay in Seville and the nine best areas to stay in Seville, Spain for tourists. Before we go straight into the video, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Located on the plain of the river Guadalquivir, the capital and largest city in the Andalusia region of Spain, Seville, Seville in Spanish, draws tourists from around the world each year. It is famous for its flamenco dancing, architectural design and Moorish buildings. The first area to look at when it comes to where to stay in Seville is Sevilla Centro. Seville Centro is the best place to stay in Seville for first-time tourists due to its proximity to Seville's most famous attractions and many choices and accommodations. If you stay here, you will be located in the middle of everything, close to the top sites, as well as many shops, restaurants and tapas bars. The centro can be broken into smaller neighbourhoods, but generally it is the area between Plaza Nueva and Plaza de Encarnación that encompasses Seville's famous shopping streets of Calle Sierpes, Calle Tetuán and La Alfalfa. Much of Seville is quite walkable. You can easily explore the city on foot. You can start exploring the city from a Plaza de Encarnación where you find Metropole Parasol or the mushrooms due to its giant mushroom shape. If you go up to the rooftop walkway Metropole Parasol, you will get views over the city. There are nice gardens in the heart of Seville where the squares and winding streets provide a great environment. The old city walls and cathedral are also things to put on your itinerary. Sevilla Centro has a lively nightlife. The Calle Pérez Galdós street attracts lots of international students and tourists with its pubs and tapas bars. Meanwhile, if you want a local atmosphere with traditional bars and restaurants, come to Plaza de la Encarnación and Plaza de los Terceros. This is a traditional Sevillan bar. El Rinconcillo on Calle Gerona. Sevilla Centro offers plenty of accommodation options, ranging from luxury hotels to budget hostels. Seville's best hotels are here, but if you look, you will find something that satisfies a tight budget. The second area in the list of the best areas to stay in Seville is the Barrio Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the city because it has an abundance of historic sites including the Royal Palace of Seville and the Giralda Tower of the Cathedral. Located in Casco Antiguo district, Santa Cruz, the old Jewish court of Seville and its name literally translates to ancient shell. As the former old Jewish court of the city during medieval times, the streets display distinctive characteristics from that time period. A labyrinth of narrow cobbled streets and alleyways intertwine to protect the inhabitants from a midday sun. If you stroll along these streets, you will see whitewashed houses, charming plafas and squares filled with orange trees, synagogues and palaces. The Seville Cathedral is the largest Gothic Roman cathedral in the world after St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and St. Paul's Cathedral in London. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is home to the 104 metre high bell tower La Giralda. You can climb the Giralda Tower where you can find a 4 metre high bronze statue called Giraldillo, representing faith. From its top, you will have stunning views. Along with the Giralda, the orange tree courtyard of the Cathedral of Seville was the surviving part of a mosque. Muslims washed from this courtyard before entering the mosque to pray. The Cathedral of Seville has the tomb of Christopher Columbus, paintings of Murillo and a royal chapel devoted to King Ferdinand III of Castile, who reclaimed Seville from the Moors. You can have the best views of the Cathedral of Seville at the Patio de Banderas. Nearby, the Plaza del Cabildo offers good local restaurants with affordable prices and a flea market on Sunday. Speaking of the cathedral, there are also a number of the oldest churches and convents in the city here too. 
giving a clear indication of the diversity and ever-changing nature of the city's population throughout the centuries. Another important site in the old town of Santa Cruz is the UNESCO-listed palace, Real Alcázar de Sevilla, the Royal Palace of Seville. Its Mudejar architectural style is a mix of Moorish and Christian cultural influences. In the Royal Palace, you can find Ambassador's Hall, beautiful Moorish Renaissance-style gardens, and Casa de Contratación, which granted the city the exclusive right to trade with the New World. Another must-see palace is the Casa de Pilatos, the most beautiful palace in Seville after the Alcázar on the Plaza de Pilatos. It was built in the 16th century by order of Don Pedro Enríquez. You can also visit the General Archive of the Indies, UNESCO World Heritage Sites for free. It displays a small fraction of 80 million pages of documentation about Spain's conquest of the New World. Santa Cruz has several museums. The Murillo Museum is a small museum and art gallery in the home of a painter, Murillo. The Flamenco Museum is the world's first and only museum of its type. While the squares feature a collection of smaller, more traditional bars, taverns and cafes, the largest streets are filled with bustling shops and restaurants, offering traditional food and products, as well as international fare and modern souvenirs. The area even has a number of bars and some clubs, open until the early hours of the morning, providing one of the best nightlife experiences on offer in the city. Santa Cruz is easily explored on foot. You can choose to book a hotel that is located near subway and tram stops. The tram line stops at many tourist landmarks in the Santa Cruz neighbourhood. The third area in the list of the best places to stay in Seville is El Arenal. Located on the east bank of the Guadalquivir River, El Arenal is close to the historic heart of the city. If you're looking to be right in the action, within walking distance to the main tourist attractions, El Arenal, along with Centro and Barrio Santa Cruz, is the best place to stay in Seville without a car. El Arenal is situated directly to the west of Santa Cruz, which was once the city's port, from where ships sailed to the New World. Arenal refers to dust clouds that would have formed when gusts of wind blew up the river. While not quite as abundant with history as its neighbour, it still has a rich history, as the primary port of the city from its founding up until the 17th century, when river silting forced it to be moved to the south of the city. As this caused much of the industry to move away from the area, it has developed into an area full of local residents, filling up the areas surrounding the attractions with other businesses, such as family-run taverns, tapas bars and traditional restaurants. The main attraction in the area is the second most important bullring in all of Spain, the de Toros de la Maestranza, or Bullring of the Real Maestranza. It is the venue for the bullfights that take place in bullfighting festivals in the Seville April Fair. When you add this historic list of attractions to the fabulous range of shops, traditional restaurants and tapas bars, taverns in the area, it makes for a fantastic place for foodies. Combine that with the fact that accommodation tends to be slightly cheaper and more abundant here, and you could have found yourself a winner. The fourth area in the list of the best places to stay in Seville is Macarena. Located to the north of Centro, Macarena Barrio is right on the boundary of the ancient city limits of Almoal, a larger portion of those ancient Moorish city walls that can be found anywhere else in the city still run through the districts to this day. A fairly affluent area, some of the grandest buildings and attractions in Seville can be found in this part of the city. There's the Basilica of Nuestra Señora de la Esperanza Macarena, a neo-baroque 20th century basilica built to house the 17th century wooden statue of Our Lady of Hope Macarena. You can also find the Museum and Treasure of La Macarena, 
a location dedicated to teaching visitors about the famous Holy Week processions in the city. Elsewhere in the area, you will also find the Andalusian Parliament building, located within the 16th century Hospital de las Cinco Llagas, an ancient hospital with the Andalusian mannerism style. The Torre de los Perdigones and Los Perdigones, gardens on the banks of the river, containing the last remnant of the 19th century foundry, the Puerta de Córdoba, a stunning gate in the aforementioned Almohad city walls, and the San Hermenegildo church. This authentic Seville barrio also features El Rinconcillo, the oldest tapas bar in the city and possibly the world, as well as Mercado de la Feria, the oldest marketplace in Seville, constructed in the 17th and 18th centuries respectively. These give you the opportunity to shop, dine and relax while surrounded by history and culture, offering you the chance to do your sightseeing around the city at your own pace. Macarena is ideal for budget travellers who are looking for an affordable accommodation area and are still close to the action. The fifth area in the list of the best areas to stay in Seville is Alameda. La Alameda de Hércules to give it its full name, is an area of fountains and vegetation, a district open to the public. This is one of Seville's hippiest and trendiest barrios, found in the northern part of Casco Antiguo and is the oldest park in Europe. In the 19th century, it was a place for the wealthy, but things changed so that it became a place to avoid. Today, it is now a trendy yet bohemian district with shops selling a range of old and new artistic and literary. You can expect a lively nightlife with tapas bars, music and shows with outdoor terraces. Two Roman columns have statues of Caesar and Hercules at the south end of the square and the chapel is at the other side. You can also find the Convento Santa Clara, the Convento San Clemente with its stunning frescoes and 16th century Azulejos, an art centre. Accommodation of every kind is here, whatever your budget. The sixth area in the list of where to stay in Seville is La Cartuja. La Cartuja, situated on the Isla de la Cartuja, is a great place to stay in Seville for business travellers along with important commercial district of the city, Nervión. Formerly an island in the river, La Cartuja was joined to its west bank by a bridge to expand the site to be used for Expo 92. It is named after the 15th century monastery of Santa Maria de las Cuevas, now a base for Andalusian art shows. The Cartuja Monastery is where Columbus stayed before his second voyage to the Americas. There is still plenty to see here, including the crypt, chapel and chapter house. The Cajasol Tower on La Cartuja is the highest structure in Andalusia. While there are now some residences here, the attractions for a visitor also include botanical gardens, a golf course, music venues, clubs and theatres. You will find the Rocío Jurado Auditorium, the Caixa Forum Sevilla, which is an underground cultural centre, and the Andalusian Centre of Contemporary Art. There are numerous bridges connecting the island with the city, including Barqueta Bridge, close to the Science and Technology Park, and the Isla Magica Theme Park, and the Alamillo Bridge near Alamillo Park. Accommodation here comes in the form of apartments and a few hotels. They are worth investigating. The seventh area in the list of where to stay in Seville is Triana. Located just within walking distance from the historic centre, Triana is the former gypsy neighbourhood, the birthplace of famous bullfighters and flamenco dancers. If you are looking for an authentic experience and local vibe, the Triana neighbourhood on the left side of the Guadalquivir River is for you. The neighbourhood is home to numerous good tapas bars, a lively market, traditional ceramics and great flamenco. 
Triana connects to the rest of the city by a famous attraction, the Isabel II Bridge, featuring a small Neo Mudejar chapel on its right hand side. The pair combine to form the most widely recognized symbol of the neighborhood. Founded as a Roman colony by the Emperor Trajan, who was born nearby, there's some dispute over the origin of the name, with some claiming it to be derived from his own name, while others have translated it to mean three rivers, or those beyond the river. There are plenty of cultural attractions to explore, including the Iglesia de Santa Ana, the Mercado de Triana, and the Museum of Tolerance. Calle Betis is a vibrant street that runs along the waterfront, where you can find many restaurants, terraces, bars and clubs. Grab a meal and a drink here and enjoy the views of the city. Triana is famous for its typical azulejos tiles and pottery, tile workshops and potteries, an industry from the Roman times. You can learn more about its history at the Museum of Centro de la Ceramica Triana and Santa Ana Pottery Factory. Triana isn't all about history and culture though. Clubs, restaurants and bars are abundant in the district, offering food, drink, live music and entertainment, with many open well into the early hours of the morning. There's a flea market that's held at the bottom of the Isabel II Bridge, which perfectly represents the gypsy district moniker the region has earned. Triana also hosts the traditional Holy Week, the flamboyant Seville Fair, or the local Vela de Santa Ana festival. All of this means Triana is a perfect place to come for people prioritizing nightlife or learning about a unique culture, all while still being surrounded by the sort of historical attractions you can find elsewhere in the city. The eighth area in the list of the best areas to stay in Seville is Nervion. Located next to Casco Antiguo district, Nervion is primarily seen as a business district. While you may not initially see that as the ideal sort of place to stay on a vacation, there are a number of specific attractions in the area that may actually make it ideal, depending on your requirements and why you are visiting the city in the first place. To begin with, it is the location of Santa Justa, the largest train station in Seville. This makes it a perfect option if you like to stay near the station, to avoid missing your train or having to carry your luggage all over the city on your way in and out of town. Next, there's the Estadio Ramon Tanches Pizjuan, the home of La Liga side Sevilla FC. This soccer stadium opened in 1958 with a capacity of seating 45,000 people. It has hosted several European Cup and World Cup games. Next, there's the Nervion Plaza, a huge shopping centre containing a range of stores and a 20-screen cinema, ideal for anyone wanting to catch a film or indulge in some retail therapy during their stay. Outside of these, there are attractions like the University of Seville's School of Business, the El Prado, which is a garden zone featuring the city's major bus hub, as well as the Tación de Caliz, the small of the city's two major train stations, which also features a fresh produce market. There are also cultural attractions, such as the Iglesia de la Concepción Inmaculada, built in 1928 and designed by Antonio Arevalo. In the middle of the neighbourhood lies the beautiful green area of Jardines de la Bulgaria, the park is separated into two parts by the Avenida de la Bulgaria. Finally, you can grab a traditional Spanish cuisine and wine at Casa Paco, which was first opened in 1999. If you want or need to be near any of these attractions, then Nervion is probably the ideal place to stay. However, if none of these are on your itinerary, you're admittedly better off looking elsewhere. The ninth area in the list of the best areas to stay in Seville is Los Remedios. Los Remedios, along with Seville city centre, Triana 
and Nervion is one of the safest neighbourhoods to stay in Seville. Los Remedios is located on the southern end of the Isla de la Cartuja. It takes its name from a Carmelite convent in the district, which was one of a few buildings remaining in the district when development began in the 20th century. It has become a fairly busy area in recent years, now featuring the city's largest port, which opened when the one in El Arenal closed down. That said, it is a location more aimed at locals than tourists, so you will find much of the accommodation here to be in the residential areas. Perhaps the main draw to the area is that it is the site of the Seville Fair in El Real, a week-long festival that begins two weeks after the end of the Holy Week. Massive tents are erected along the bank of a river, where people can drink, dance, enjoy live entertainment, ride in horse-drawn carriages and even visit an amusement park, which is erected for the event. Outside of the fair, there are a few more attractions, such as Cuba Square and its sculptures, the Museum of Carriages and Los Remedios Tower. Despite the above list, this is still a place that relies on the fair and its residential accommodation to sell it. So, chances are, while it's perfect for those two things, it may not be right for everyone else. Now you have it. Where to stay in Seville and the best areas to stay in Seville. Overall, Seville Centro is the best place to stay in Seville for first-time tourists due to its proximity to the Seville's most famous attractions and many choices and accommodations. If you book a hotel here, you will be located in a central location within walking distance to many sites, restaurants, bars and shops. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.